treatment of compound P with borane followed by uh, oxidation with hydrogen peroxide in the presence of NaOH gives compound Q. Okay. So now what kind of reaction is this? This reaction right here is hydroboration followed by oxidation. Following our HNMR spectra for compounds P and Q, along with C13 NMR spectral data, from this information, they do structural formulas for compounds Q and uh, P. Okay. Now, what kind of compounds will undergo hydroboration followed by oxidation? Normally, it will be either an alkene or alkyne. Okay. So let's first find out whether this compound is an alkene or alkyne. For that, let's take a look into the degree of unsaturation. So... This is going to be 2C plus 2 plus nitrogen minus hydrogen minus X divided by 2. That's going to be 14 plus 2 plus nitrogen minus 12 minus 0 divided by 2. So when you do everything, it's going to be 2. It has a total of 2 degree of unsaturation, which tells us that it could be a double bond and a ring or it could be a triple bond. Okay, so these are the possibilities. Let's now take a look into the HNMR spectrum of compound P. Now in the HNMR spectrum, we could see that there are multiple CH2s here. And we don't have any CH3s here because why do we say that there are multiple CH2s? Because you only see two hydrogens, right? So this is going to correspond to a CH2 and this is going to correspond to two uh, CH2s, which are actually exactly in the same environment. So I'm going to write this one as two CH2s, which are exactly in the same environment. Okay, and then this is one type of CH2. And here again, we have two CH2s, which are in the same environment. And here, um, this is going to be the vinylic protons, so which corresponds to two hydrogens. So this is going to be something like this. So this probably could correspond to a double bond. Now, the only way that you can have all of these CH2s together is going to be only when they are going to be in the ring structure. So let's find out the number of total number of carbons that we have here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons. And that's what we have here. So we can assume that all of these 7 carbons are arranged in a circle. So the ring itself is going to count for 1 degree of unsaturation. So let's number this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we also know that there is a double bond. So we'll put a double bond here. Now, if we assume that this is going to be the um, uh, structure of C7H14, now let's see what's going to happen if it undergoes hydroboration followed by oxidation. Okay. So when it undergoes hydroboration followed by oxidation, It is going to follow the Markovnikov's rule, but here this is a symmetrical alkene. The hydrogen can go on to this carbon or it can go on to this carbon, but accordingly the OH is going to go to the other carbon, right? So the product would be an alcohol after it undergoes hydrogenation. Now let's take a look into the HNMR spectrum of Q. So we said that this is going to be P and this one right here is Q. So in the um, HNMR spectrum, we only see uh, two different peaks. So this is all going to be considered a multiplet. Of course, like there are several peaks within it. And this one right here is going to correspond to the OH peak. And let's find out the number of, car number of hydrogens that we have here. So all of this is going to be CH2. So there are six CH2s. And then that's going to correspond to a total of 12 hydrogens. And then you have one other hydrogen here. So totally there are three, 13 hydrogens. That's going to come as several signals which are overlapped together to give us a multiplet. Okay, so the compound P is going to have the structure and compound Q is going to be an alcohol.